Good morning. I am Har Simrat, and our session today is called "Adding Spice," talking about people and places. In this session, we are going to talk about adjectives. Now, you've done adjectives before in your grammar sessions. Today, we are going to look at some basic guidelines for applying adjectives. The aim is simple. We want to be more accurate in our descriptions. Therefore, we look at some examples of correct usage. Then we'll try to describe things, concentrating on adjectives of quality. Talking about people, we'll discuss the film Tare Zameen Par. I hope you've all seen it. We'll also talk about places, specifically Chandigarh. And finally, of course, we have exercises in usage. So it's going to be a very interesting session, and I hope you all are looking forward to it. So let us proceed. Before we start a session, let's try to recollect what adjectives are. Now you've done your sessions and you know what they are. Adjectives are words that describe a noun or a pronoun. They usually appear before the word they describe. They may be used at the end of a sentence if they describe the subject. Can you give me some examples? For example, a beautiful doll. a red rose let's examine these two examples beautiful and red are adjectives because they tell us more about the noun adjectives also answer questions like which one what kind how many which or whose Let's look at some examples. He is a good doctor. Now we know something about this doctor. We know that he is a good doctor. I bought a beautiful doll for my niece. Tare Zameen Pe is a wonderful film. Chandigarh is a beautiful city. I prefer golden apples to red ones. I have two school bags. This is my father's car. They answer the questions which one what kind how many which or whose so adjectives tell us something very definite about the noun he is a good doctor what sort of a doctor is he good doctor the adjective would be good the second example is i bought a beautiful doll for my niece what kind of a doll did i buy for my niece a beautiful doll Tare Zameen Pe is a wonderful film I'm sure you can tell me what the adjective is it's wonderful because Tare Zameen Pe is a wonderful film a particular kind of a film Chandigarh is a beautiful city now this sentence is similar to the last what kind of a city is Chandigarh it's a beautiful city I prefer golden apples to red ones Again, what kind of an apple? Which sort of an apple? The red apple or the golden apple? I prefer the golden apple to the red ones. Golden and red are both adjectives. I have two school bags. It answers the question, how many? I have two school bags. This is my father's car. Can somebody ask a correct question here? That's right. Whose? whose car is this my father's so the adjective would be my father now we'll take up an easy exercise you have a list of sentences given in your workbook i want you to correct them there are some small mistakes in all these sentences i am sure you'll be able to tackle all of them let's take up the first sentence 
I am eating an apple red. Let's hear the sentence again. I am eating an apple red. You're right. The problem is in the location of the adjective. I am eating a red apple. Now from the second sentence onwards, you'll be doing your own work and I'll be discussing the answers with you later. The next sentence is, Miss India is very much beautiful. Again, Miss India is very much beautiful. The next sentence, Roses smell sweetly. I'll repeat, Roses smell sweetly. The next sentence is, It was a Sunday in the winter. It was a Sunday in the winter. Next, we ate a cake whole. I know that's very easy. We ate a cake whole. Next sentence, such people I do not like. Again, such people I do not like. And the last sentence, this car is my father. Again, this car is my father. Now they're very easy indeed. I'm sure you got them all right. Let me just go over the answers with you. Now we discussed the first answer. I am eating a red apple. The second sentence, Miss India is very beautiful, not very much. We don't say very much beautiful. We should say Miss India is very beautiful. Next, roses smell sweet, not sweetly, sweet. It was a Sunday in the winter. We'll make it a sunny day in the winter. We ate a cake whole. We have corrected that too. We ate a whole cake. Such people I do not like. That's easy. I do not like such people. And finally, the last sentence. This car is my father. The car can't be your father, I'm sure. This car is my father's. So how many of you got all the sentences right? I'm sure most of you did. That's very good indeed. In case somebody found this exercise difficult, you definitely need to pay more attention to your sessions. Now let's move on. I want you to think back to the title of the session here. Adding spice, talking about people and places. But so far we've only done what seems to be a grammar session. It's not a grammar session. My point is quite simple here. This session is about using adjectives of quality when you try to describe something. Let's move on to a vocabulary building exercise. The aim of the exercise is to use adjectives of quality. Now this exercise consists of a process. The process has three steps. Step number one, we list all the words that des describe the noun in question. Step number two, we shortlist the more suitable qualities. And step number three, we choose one, the best feature. In other words, let's take an example. I am a good student. Now the adjective in the sentence is, of course, good. I am a good student. Can you give me a better word for a good student? Let's simply apply our process, vocabulary building process. First of all, we think of the qualities of a good student. A good student may be intelligent, hardworking, obedient, smart, regular, sincere. These are all qualities of a good student but I want you to pick one essential quality. 
I'll just repeat the words. Intelligent, hardworking, obedient, smart, regular, sincere. Think about it for a moment. All right. A good student is not necessarily intelligent or smart. A hardworking student would be regular and sincere and probably obedient too. So hard work is the essential quality of a good student. Now do you agree with me when I say that a good student is probably a hard working student? Of course this exercise is a little subjective. You may say that a good student is an intelligent student or a good student is a regular student. But on my part I would pick the word hard working. Let's take another example. I have wonderful friends. I have wonderful friends. First, let's identify the adjective in the sentence. What kind of friends do I have? Wonderful. Therefore, the adjective is wonderful. Now, let's take uh, some features of these wonderful friends. Are wonderful friends intelligent friends? I don't think so. Are they hardworking friends? No. Cooperative? Well, maybe smart. Should wonderful friends be smart friends? Helpful? Sincere? Let's just go over the words again. Some of them are obviously not applicable where friends are concerned. Intelligent, hardworking, cooperative, smart, helpful, sincere. Which is the best word to describe a wonderful friend? Think of a wonderful friend you have. Think of your best friend. How would you describe that best friend? Now, what do we require from that best friend? We expect sincerity from that best friend. Therefore, a wonderful friend would probably be a sincere friend. Let's take another example. My pet doggy Moti is so sweet. I love him. Now, we are not speaking English here. We are making noises. My pet dog Moti is so sweet. Give me a better word for this so sweet, which is not English. My pet dog is attractive, untroublesome, faithful, playful, quiet. Which do you think is the best word? Again, keep in mind, what are the qualities of a pet? The kind of pet you love to have. A pet dog would be playful. The best word is playful. If you want an untroublesome pet, why keep a pet? Do you want a faithful pet? Possibly. Faithful might be a good word. An attractive pet? No, I don't think so. A quiet pet? Pets are never quiet. So possibly a playful pet or a faithful pet. So my pet doggy Moti is so playful. I love him. Okay, let's take another example. I really enjoyed watching Chuck De India. It was a great film. What kind of a film was this great film? It was funny, entertaining, original, inspiring, singing, dancing. Let's think about these words. Singing, dancing is obviously not correct. A good film would not be a singing, dancing film. It may be a musical which Chuck De India is not. So this film was funny, entertaining, original, inspiring. Give it a thought. All right. A good film would be entertaining, no doubt. Now one may appreciate an original film. You know, the film which has a new story or an original plot, you might like it. But the film which inspires you is possibly the great film. So, out of all these words, let's pick the best word. Chuck the India is an inspiring film. Therefore, let's look at the words we have picked. I am a hardworking student. I have sincere friends. My pet dog Moti is playful. I really enjoyed watching Chuck the India. It was an inspiring film. Hardworking, sincere, playful, inspiring. 
Now these are good words and they are so much better than great, wonderful, good. We have better expression when we use adjectives and not mere interjections. Interjections would be expressions. Things are great, wonderful, lovely, fantastic. It's much better to use adjectives and describe them rather than just tell us how we feel about them. Okay, so now we come to the first feature of the session, talking about people. And we have a discussion of the film Tare Zameen Par. I hope you've all seen the film. Now we have a conversation on the film in which we try to examine why it's a great film. So listen carefully all of you because there are questions following. What did you do on Sunday? I went to see Tare Zameen Par with my family. You did. I just don't want to see it. Why not? It's a wonderful film. No love story, no dance sequences. No pretty actress. I don't see the point of seeing that film. The story is really good. I know that Amir Khan is a good actor. Oh, Amir is a supporting actor in this film. He appears just before the interval. The hero is an eight-year-old boy who suffers from learning dyslexia. He has trouble learning how to read and write. Amir Khan plays the part of an art teacher who helps the child overcome his problems. How does he do that? by understanding Ishan. He's a mental case, isn't he? Not at all. Ishan is an intelligent boy. He is also a talented artist. His creative mind is reflected in his paintings. He paints fish, dogs and kites in the brightest of colors. But art is not important in the world of adults. His parents and teachers are interested in homework and good marks. Obviously, you have to score good marks in order to have a future. That's what his father believes. He thinks that Ishan is a lazy, stupid and naughty boy. In contrast, his elder brother Johan is a very good student and sportsman. So what does he do? Send the younger son to a boarding school to be disciplined? Exactly. But the problem only gets worse. Ishan sinks into depression. At this point, Amir Khan joins the school as an art teacher. He soon becomes very popular with the students. He realizes that Ishan needs understanding and some special attention. Attention? What kind of attention? There is a difference in the way he instructs Ishan, who is soon able to read and write quite well. Then Nikum sir organizes a painting competition in which the entire school participates. Ishan is declared to be the winner. For the first time, his unique style of painting is appreciated. Is it? And what do the parents have to say on that? When his worried parents come to meet the teachers, they see a sea change in the younger son. They are delighted, of course. What a great film. I think I'll see it in the hall and I'll take my family along with me. I'm sure they're going to love it. They will. I hope you were all listening very carefully and you understood every single word of the conversation. And I hope you've all seen the film. It's a wonderful film. Anyway, whether you've seen the film or not, let's talk about Ishan. I have a list of questions for you and I want you to give me the right answer. Question number one, how old is Ishan? I repeat, how old is Ishan? Next, is he a good student? Is he a good student? Next question, what is his hobby? What is his hobby? Next, does he lack intelligence? Does he lack intelligence? Number five, what is his problem? What is his problem? And the next question, does his art teacher solve the problem? I repeat, does his art teacher solve the problem? Easy questions and I'm sure whether you've seen the film or not, you can all answer them. I'll just give you the solution to each question. Ishan Avasti is 8 years old. 
Is he a good student? No, he is not a good student. Next, what is his hobby? His hobby is painting. Does he lack intelligence? Is he a mental case? No, he does not lack intelligence. Ishan is an intelligent boy. Next question, what is his problem? Now you might have found this question a little hard. His problem is that he finds it difficult to learn how to read and write. Now all of us go to school to learn, don't we? We learn how to read and write. But some people find it a little difficult and they may need special attention. So Ishan finds it difficult to learn how to read and write. And the last question, can his art teacher solve the problem? Yes, his art teacher does indeed solve the problem. And that is the story. So I hope you've enjoyed this feature. I've got a few more questions for you. You have to simply pick the right option. Why does Ishan fail to learn how to read and write like his classmates? I'll just repeat the question. Why does Ishan fail to learn how to read and write like his classmates? Option one, he does not work hard. Option two, he suffers from learning dyslexia. And option three, he's a disobedient student. I'm sure anybody who's seen the film or heard the conversation can give me the right answer. The correct answer would be the second option. He suffers from learning dyslexia. This film has received a lot of appreciation because it's taken up a matter of social interest in a very nice manner. Okay, now this is the last question. When his worried parents come to meet the teachers, they see a sea change in the younger son. I'll just repeat the statement. When his worried parents come to meet the teachers, they see a sea change in the younger son. What does the phrase mean, a sea change? It means that, one, Ishan has really changed. Two, he has started painting the sea. And three, the parents can see a change in Ishan. I'll just repeat all the options again. A sea change means that, one, Ishan has really changed. Two, he has started painting the sea. Three, the parents can see a change in Ishan. I think that's quite easy. A sea change. Now, a sea is a big body of water. It's not a village pond. It's not a small lake. It's a sea. Ishan has really changed. So, you're all correct there. It is option one. Okay, now let's talk about Ishan's teacher. Now, although the hero of the film is the little boy, the supporting actor played by Amir Khan is also a marvelous performance. It's an amazing role. Let's talk about Nikum sir. The art teacher in Tare Zameen Par, Mr. Ram Shankar Nikum played by Amir Khan brings, up, brings about this sea change. He understands Ishan's problem. He knows how to deal with it. I think it's not enough to call him a good teacher. Let's think of better words. Okay, I'll give you a long list of words to describe that good teacher. Or not really that good teacher. I'll give you a long list of words to describe a good teacher. And let's pick appropriate adjectives. Would a good teacher be smart? Smart as in good looking or clever? Would a good teacher be hard working? The kind of teacher who takes pains over his work? Would a good teacher be dedicated? A sincere teacher? Would a good teacher be strict? And teachers be very stern towards the students? Would a good teacher be kind? Understanding? Ambitious? Determined to meet his goals? Talkative? Let me repeat all the words again. A good teacher would be smart, Hardworking, dedicated, strict, kind, understanding, ambitious, talkative. So I've given you a list of eight words. Take your time. Go over the list once more and pick at least 
three or four words which are correct. All right, a good teacher would be hardworking, dedicated, understanding, ambitious. I think at least four words are quite good here for the good teacher. So when we try to talk about Ishan's teacher, we should describe him as a hardworking teacher or a dedicated teacher. We can call him an understanding person. I hope you've really enjoyed this part of the session because frankly, I have enjoyed conducting it. And now we come to our second part of the session. Now here we are trying to talk about places talking about places and we pick a particular place for a practical exercise. Therefore, the feature is called Describing Chandigarh, the city beautiful. Again, we have a conversation for you and I want you to listen very carefully because right after the conversation, we have lots of exercises. So, stay tuned please. Where are you from? I am from the city beautiful. Which city is that? Chandigarh. Chandigarh is the capital of both Punjab and Haryana. It is in fact a union territory. What makes it so special? Is it a historical place? No, it isn't a historical city like Delhi or Panipat. Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru commissioned Lee Corbusier, a French architect, to design the city in the 1950s. So, it's a modern city. And what is so special about this modern city? It is well located. Chandigarh is only 250 kilometers away from Delhi. It is also very close to the hills. That's convenient. You can go uphill any time. We do that pretty often. The city is also very well planned. Lee Corbusier divided Chandigarh into rectangular sectors. Each sector is a self-sufficient neighborhood with its own market, parks, places of worship, schools, colleges all within 10 minutes walking distance from within the sector. The sectors are linked by straight roads running both north to south and east to west. Like in Mohenjo-daro and Harappa? Well, yes, but the similarity ends there. I'm sure it does. And how many sectors are there in Chandigarh? The original city had only 24 sectors, but now that the city is expanding rapidly, there are over a hundred. Luckily, it is expanding along the same guidelines as far as possible. And are you happy about it? I am delighted about it. You see, the one drawback of my hometown was it was rather a dull place to live in. But that has changed. How so? Well, Chandigarh is a well-established education centre now. Students come to study in our colleges from all over the country. And there are special economic zones coming up too. A lot of working people are also moving into our city. Well, that's impressive. I think I want to visit your city, beautiful. Be my guest. We'll admire the famous rock garden, lays in the rose garden, paddle in the Sukhna lake, and of course, go up him. Wow, that sounds great. I'm sure you've all been listening very carefully to the conversation. All of you, well, are any of you from Chandigarh? Some of you may be. Now I have a list of words for you and I want you to consider every word carefully. How many of these words describe the city of Chandigarh as we know it and as we know it through the conversation? Let me start. The first word is modern. Is it correct to describe Chandigarh as a modern city? Think about it. Is it a modern city? The second word is safe. A safe city the third word would be developed. A developed city. Now what do we mean by a developed city? I think when we talk about a developed city, we would be talking about the kind of facilities available in the city. A developed city, when we talk about development, we talk about the kind of facilities available in the city. Is it right to call Chandigarh a developed city? An expanding city. An expanding city, of course, is the growing city. A clean city. 
I'm sure we all understand what a clean city means. Consider the option please. A clean city. A crowded city. Crowded as, as in the fish market. That would be crowded. It's Chandigarh a crowded city. A quiet city. A quiet, quiet would probably be peaceful. Is it a quiet city? The next option would be historical. Is Chandigarh a historical city? I think this was well covered in the conversation when we talked about whether it's a historical city or not. Industrial, an industrial city. Now there are of course a number of industrial cities all over India. Is Chandigarh one of them? A metropolitan city. What exactly is a metropolis? A metropolis would be a mega city, a very large city. Is Chandigarh that? A metropolitan city? A beautiful city. Beauty, of course, to some extent, lies in the eyes of the beholder. Would you consider Chandigarh a beautiful city? And the last word is capital. Is it a capital city? So consider all these words and pick the words which you think are right for the city. I'll just repeat them once more. When we call Chandigarh a good city, let's try to pick some better words. Here is a list of words. Modern, safe, developed, expanding, clean, crowded, quiet historical, industrial, metropolitan, beautiful, capital. I think it's quite safe to assume that it is a modern city. I don't think there was any mention of being safe or not safe. So I think that's quite a vague word. It is a developed city, right? We talked about the city being divided into so many sectors and every sector being a, an independent unit. That shows a very high degree of development. We did mention that it's an expanding city. After all, there are special economic zones coming up and a lot of working people moving into the city. So it becomes an expanding city. Finally, clean. Actually, we do pride ourselves on Chandigarh being a clean and a green city. But that's not the best of expressions. Crowded. No, it's not crowded. Not at all. Quiet. A quiet city? Well, it was quiet in the past. But things are actually looking up. Now we are talking about excitement in the city. Because things are happening. Historical? No, it's not a historical city. Chandigarh is not a natural dwelling. Industrial? Again, no, it's not an industrial city. Metropolitan? No, not at all. There are only five metropolises in India. Those would be Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai, Bangalore and Kolkata. Chandigarh is not a metropolis and won't be for a long time. Chandigarh is a beautiful city. Well, we like to call it city beautiful. And it is certainly a capital city. So, going over the list again, if we want to describe Chandigarh, we would use words like modern, developed, expanding, beautiful or capital. That brings us to the end of the session. I hope you've enjoyed the session. I would just like to recap the session. We talked about the use of adjectives. It's important to use adjectives in the right manner. But then, of course, your vocabulary can always have a collection of adjectives, a never-ending collection. Now, we talked about descriptions. We described people, taking the example of the film Tare Zameen Par. Now, remember, a good student would be hardworking, sincere, obedient. I think those are three good words for a good student. A good teacher could be? Hardworking again, dedicated, committed, understanding. These are good words.
Similarly, a good pet would be playful. A good film would be entertaining. Let's stop using the word good at random. Let's start using better words. I saw an entertaining film. My best friend is a loyal friend. My teacher is committed. Not just good, committed. Let's start using better expression. Let's start using adjectives starting today. And let's not forget our activity in which we talked about places. We described Chandigarh as a modern, developed, expanding city. I may describe my village as a quiet, peaceful place. Similarly, one could describe Delhi as a historical capital as well as advanced city or a metropolitan city. Now, these are all adjectives. So today onwards, let's resolve to add more and more spice in our speech by using more and more adjectives. So all the best. I look forward to meeting you in some other session. Until then, bye-bye.